Hello and welcome back to Free Flow. Um, in today's video, we're going to do a little, little 101, a little, a little ditty on the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle. So, um, if you've watched my seasons video, you'll know I just love the word follicular. So I might say that quite a few times throughout the video. Um, and today we're just going to explore a little bit like we did with the uh, menstruation phase video. We're just going to explore um, uh, ways that you might be feeling in terms of energy levels, mood, um, and yeah, any movement that you might want to explore during this phase of your cycle, um, foods, things like that. So just a little kind of overview of things. And um, yeah, let's just dive in. So last episode we discussed menstrual phase which tends to be if we're looking at a classic 28 day cycle which mine rarely is to be honest but we'll, we'll use that as an as an example then the uh menstrual phase is cycle day one two six five six or seven it obviously kind of varies a bit but if we say classic 28 day cycle be the days kind of one to six one to five and then uh follicular phase so in a spring would be around day six to day 11 obviously we don't have to fit it exactly into that time frame as i say just working with kind of the classic 28 day cycle so i'm kind of in that cusp today i'm on cycle day six um i had a disgustingly late light light late night last night um so <laughs> i'm sort of feeling a bit spacey but i can definitely feel the uh yeah the kind of en energy rising a little bit here so um yeah so follicular phase um also corresponds to the waxing moon um so if you're using the moon to chart your cycles um as i spoke about in my uh, moon video um then you could use the the waxing moon um as this part of your as your you know as your cycle to kind of have that anchor to use the moon as an anchor um and yeah and it also corresponds to inner spring so again i mentioned that i think in the seasons video um that is this just beautiful language that red school um have provided for us to yeah to kind of have the, these discussions and i also feel like obviously the the way the energy levels are throughout the cycle also correspond really really well with the season so i think it's just a good way to kind of remind us that uh, nothing in nature blooms all year round right that's a quote that i always kind of remember it's okay to have like time for some rest time for some movement time for yeah kind of slowing the roll a little bit it's all it's all good it's all good um so i've got my notes here as well so if i look down it's just so i don't waffle um and yeah so follicular phase in a spring waxing moon um i think a good descriptive word here is optimistic i always feel a bit more optimistic um in follicular phase and um last video i gave like a few descriptive words as well and so i'm going to continue that trend in this video and i would say my words for follicular phase would be playful uh oh, teasing no playful um childlike and oh, i did put that word curious um curiouser and curiouser what's that from um yeah so i feel like those kind of yeah i think i, I, think, I think the way i described it many a time throughout the podcast as well um is that it's kind of for me it kind of feels like this little this little hatchling this little chick kind of just popping out of its shell and just kind of coming out into the world so there's kind of that like vulnerability we've kind of been in this little egg this little cocoon whilst we've been in the menstrual phase and then we're kind of ready to sort of peep, peep out and kind of explore the rest of the world a little bit um so there is a there is a vulnerability in that as well i think and um and i think also one of the maybe one of the challenges for this part of the cycle and i will do some videos on kind of the the challenges and also the good stuff uh, in each part of the cycle this is just kind of an overview but i do think that um that yeah that kind of vulnerability uh can be a bit of a challenge and also just the uh kind of holding of the tension um i think like holding that tension to not like rush out into the world and do loads and loads of stuff um because you kind of i think and you and you might find the same as well i kind of noticed kind of cycle day three i sort of get a little bit of a peak in energy cycle day four um and i maybe think that that's where sorry that might be where like the also just ignore my nails um that might be where the kind of estrogen is sort of starting to rise a little bit um and i think sometimes there's that yeah there's that kind of tension of like just not letting myself kind of run off loose and you know ready to create and do all the things um 
just to kind of you know to kind of pause um but yeah we i think myself and julia spoke about this quite a bit in um in some of the episodes of free flow as well especially when we explore in a spring um i think that's in season one and we might we might mention it again later in the in the seasons as well i think maybe in season three so um yeah if you want to kind of look into that a bit more you can but uh, as i said i'll do some videos i think on the the kind of you know the pit potential pitfalls of different phases of the cycle um so yeah we kind of have that rising energy um i think we kind of start to notice that and um i think the the kind of the big um sort of strength here is plan so i think i mentioned sort of daydreamy uh daydreaming in the menstrual phase and i think for in a in a uh, in a spring follicular phase really that that it just for me there's something that happens where i think the um as someone that has ADHD, the kind of the rise of the estrogen kind of brings that um, that clarity, that little bit of focus, a little bit more happiness. It brings that kind of better um, cognitive function. Um, it's still not great because of the ADHD, but it does. It is better when the estrogen um, rises. I've noticed in in my uh, you know years of charting. So um, I think it's really important that we remember that because there's a lot of research um, that still needs to be done in terms of ADHD and how it affects um female slash uh female sign at birth um you know so, uh, cycle how, how how it can affect us with our brains um because we yeah we don't kind of have that sort of um testosterone rise and fall kind of like a you know kind of like the sun like if we think of sort of um you know the, the men kind of having that that, tes that testosterone level it's very different for us we kind of do go with that energy of the moon and therefore you know medication and things like that are potentially going to affect us in a different way and i think um i think i spoke about this i definitely spoke about this in another video um i can't remember if that video is out yet so i think i might have mentioned it but really the um maybe it was in the seasons video actually but i think with the estrogen when the estrogen rises my understanding is that um that helps with the serotonin that word i can never say nor norineparin one day I'll remember to look it up before I start filming myself. But anyway, um, that one. And then also the dopamine. So I think the rise in estrogen helps to, um, helps with like the brain kind of getting better access to that, to those chemicals. Um, and therefore things like happiness, uh, cognitive function, um, those kind of things come a little bit more easily. Um, that's a very basic, <laughs> that's a very basic way of explaining it um and i think i did do maybe a, a more clear job of explaining that in um the seasons video and also in my free download um at the world well, the moment it's free that might change but at the moment it's free the um pmdd adhd and me uh survival guide so i do speak about it in that as well um anyway um so yeah planning for me it just comes a little bit more easily i think the biggest thing the biggest kind of tip that i'll say off the back of that is that if we're going to be planning like the rest of the month for example or the week just remember to plan from a perspective of um luteal phase rather than from a perspective of follicular phase which maybe sounds a bit counterintuitive because it's like why would you not just plan in your luteal phase but for me all the thi all the pennies kind of click for my planning in the inner spring like I kind of just have the urge to plan whether that is like kind of scheduling a, my week out or my month or like when I'm going to film blah 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 um I kind of when I do that um, and I'm get, still getting better at doing that to be honest with you but when I do that then I really look at when I'm I'm kind of really note down you know the, the face of my cycle in my calendar so I know okay let's not do like loads and loads of filming on uh like and I cycle day 24 because I'm going to be really spacey and it's going to take me so many takes to just say what I want to say and um, I'm also like a bit more vulnerable to the inner critic then so I'm more likely to kind of censor myself or be like oh I'm saying um too many times or whatever whereas now I'm like just get out <laughs> just say the word to get it out so um yeah she says saying um a lot but yeah so when you're planning just remember there's going to be a phase of your cycle where you're just not going to have as much energy and that's okay doesn't mean so you can't do anything during those phases of the cycle it's just knowing and accepting there are pot potentially more limitations but that's not necessarily a bad thing you know if you if you struggle to rest and then the progesterone rises in luteal phase then um you can maybe carve out a bit more time for rest during that part of the cycle and maybe you know for me i'm a bit more on the go in follicular um and ovulation phases because i do find it kind of harder to rest in those times but i also have the physical energy that like needs to needs to come out in a creative or 
sweaty way <laughs> like I'm moving my body or whatever the thing is um so just just a little just a little pro hack there pro tip top tip um words also food um fermented and cruciferous foods veggies fruits um <laughs> I'm gonna leave this in I'm not I'm not editing that out Woo! my little flowers my little flowers are you gonna stay up we're gonna or are you going to fall down again okay we'll see <laughs> um so yeah i find personally i find that during luteal uh, like the later half of my cycle luteal and menstrual phase i definitely crave like warmer foods um and then in kind of follicular and um summer i'm kind of a bit more like i don't know more likely to choose like a filling salad but like a salad or um yeah kind of just more uncooked things really um even if it's just a snacks so um yeah food wise um, things change a little bit as to what i need what i'm craving um there are lots of different uh, instagram accounts and things that really kind of dive into the food side of it i think a really good thing to do is just to kind of explore it for yourself um i'm looking into it a little bit more as well but i just say that because i'm not a trained like nutritionist and there are some really amazing accounts um that are and i can't remember any of them off the top of my head um but i'm sure if you have a little look you'll, you'll find some and um it's not something i'll go into loads um in terms of the food from a nutritional standpoint just because it's not like i say it's not something i'm trained in i'm really the yoga and the meditation side yeah 100 percent um but then i do also i'm really really quite obsessed with a lot of <laughs> nutrition things so i'll kind of just share you know some bits uh as we move forward with some of these videos um there's probably going to be some i don't know there might be some kind of like plan my meals with me or what i ate in a day luteal phase or whatever just to see just to see as, as just as much of an experiment for me to see oh actually this thing really this thing really helped when i ate with my you know with my cycle um so yeah anyway i'm gonna waffle if i'm not careful so um the i think the final thing i really wanted to touch on was exercise or movement um during follicular phase so a hit workout really nice especially if you're kind of getting that rising energy and you sort of feel like a, you're not too sure what to do with it i think having just a good hit workout can be really fun i really like um is it called is it mad fit i think it's mad fit and she does loads of um like dance videos on youtube they're so fun they're so fun i just love it i'll do like uh, she'll just have a. Uh, I don't know how she does she gets around like all the copyright you know ways of doing or maybe she just doesn't monetize it but anyway she i'm really grateful for her she's she's incredible and she will have like i don't know the ariana grande the newest ariana grande song and she'll have done like a dance to that so it might just be like a three minute you know three to five minute thing or whatever but it's just a fun way to like kind of do a bit, bit a bit of dancing i come from a background of dancing so i just love to dance and um and just get like you know have a bit of energy come out it's just really it's a really fun way to do it um and she has some really good like um you know arm workouts or like abs to this song or whatever like lots of different stuff so definitely i think it's mad fit i really 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 like really like really really, love really rate her um also just love a bit of jane fonda don't know if any of you know jane fonda from back in the day i used to watch her vhs tapes uh back in the early 90s that my mum had them oh my gosh in the living room so much fun like i said i just grew up doing a lot of dance and then like in between time i would just be doing loads of aerobics and i actually have um <laughs> i actually have a few leotards that i bought last year from vintage and i was like i'm just gonna get a couple of leotards and just have a bit of fun like when i'm doing a jane fonda and i'm in the house and i'm like i'm just it's just so much fun like it's just yeah sometimes it's just fun to just dress up you could do like crazy 80s hair oh the outfits they wear are amazing so and again they're um available on youtube some amazing people have just uploaded <laughs> not sure how legal it is but i'm really grateful to them so um yeah and another one i i really enjoy is body fit body fit by amy body fit with amy i think it's body fit by amy she does lots of really good workouts with um yeah either like no uh you know just using body weight or kettlebells i really love like her kettlebell she's got a good kettlebell standing abs workout and arms um and dumbbell ones as well and there's some also some resistance fan workouts so yeah i really really like those they're some of my favorite like youtube um yeah things to kind of do as i'm as i'm working out if i just want to shake it up from the gym you know sometimes i'm like i just need to shake it up i'm getting bored i've got adhd let's embrace that rather than like forcing myself to do something i don't want to do just to have moved and sweated that day you know um i will also say yes yeah, so i've got hit um weights i do like my weights workouts here um again i really feel like with the movement side of things 
you know, I see a lot of like, again, kind of Instagram and things like that, where it's like, do this thing on this day, or this part of your cycle. But I really think like, you kind of, you need to experiment and do what feels best for you. You might want to do a workout on your menstrual phase. That to me, I just, I'm absolutely exhausted. If I do that, I'm so tired and I just can't lift very heavy things. I mean, I don't lift heavy, heavy anyway, but like, I just really can't, you know, really, I really struggle to do that. Um, so again, it's really just experimenting and doing what works for you. Um, and I will say, yeah, here I really enjoy like more Hatha yoga, um, sometimes a bit more of a flow. Um, I'm kind of probably prefer a more dynamic flow in the um, ovulation phase, but yeah, kind of some Hatha yoga here um, and always nature. I mean, I don't always write it down in my little cheat sheet thing, but walking, being in nature, maybe I'm going to message like my best friend or whatever, um, and with some good voice notes, like that's something that I really, really enjoy during this part of my cycle. So as I say, have a little explore and see, you know, see what feels best for you. Big red rule. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, I will go into, yeah, kind of a bit more depth with, with, uh, the phases kind of as we go on, but I'm trying to keep these sort of short and sweet like me <laughs> as I'm five foot two. Um, <laughs> anyway thank you so much for joining me today um i'd love to hear your uh, experience with follicular phase um i think that yeah sometimes you know people can be kind of in this phase for a bit longer if you have a longer cycle my my follicular phase tends to be very short because it's um i don't i tend to have quite short cycles so um and i i did used to find that on cycle day five for quite a while i would feel really 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 anxious and i think um sort of for about about a year year and a half that was it was that way and I think it was that kind of rise in estrogen maybe was sort of rising quite quickly um after you know after my bleed so um yeah I'll go into that in another video um I'll maybe explore the shadow sides but yeah thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in my next video bye folks <laughs>